How are y'all doing YouTube? So here she is. If you see my previous video, I was saying, I was telling y'all that I was gonna get my old truck back, the Peterbilt. And here she is guys. Just wanted to show y'all, it's a 13 speed with the Cummings. And right now we're in Oklahoma and it's 19 degrees. So it's freezing, it's cold. And we just stopped here at a come and go to put some diesel. And we're gonna take a load here to um, to Arkansas, another mulch load to Walmart. And then after that, we're gonna get out of Oklahoma and try to head down to Texas to warmer temperatures because it's just way too cold. You can see it's, it was worse in the morning, but yeah, it's still cold. It's 19 right now, 19 degrees. And yeah, let me show you all the inside of the Peterbilt. Like I said, it's a 13 speed and she's real, she's real nice. I like this one better than the Freightliner. As on my, if you see my previous videos, I was driving a white Freightliner and this is just much better. It's a lot more space and power, of course. Has two beds, a nail here, nail here, 13, engine brake. The fan for the fan the mirrors I know we have them on because it is cold out and yeah all the gauges it's a little older than the Freightliner but she's nice here I'm just I can fully stand up try to get a shot fully stand up and I still have more room little refrigerator you know I don't use it but a yeah, little closet space here my jackets, the bed. Yeah, this is the Peterbilt I was talking about, guys. They were fixing it at the shop. She had, um, they are changing an airbag that was leaking air. They just changed that and, and the defrost wasn't working, so they fixed that. And yeah, I got it back. It was in the shop for like a week. That's why I was on the white Freightliner. And yeah, she's good. And right now, when I was coming on the road, We've been on the road for like 40 minutes. The the trailer tire in the very back, I seen it a little low. So right now we're gonna grab the tire pressure gauge here. And we're gonna take the check the the air on that on that tire and make sure that you know we have good yesterday it got flat on me, so I'm pretty sure it's gonna need some air. But as soon as we drop this load, um, I'll fill it up. I have a hose there. I connect to the air, air line and we'll just fill that up whenever we don't have a load so it's easier. So yeah, y'all can see there we're at 75. There's this tire here, we're at 75. So she's gonna need some air. But like I said, we'll go ahead and fill that up later. Yeah, guys, in this video, I'm gonna show y'all how to strap. We're gonna pick up a load of lumber, like I said, and I'm gonna show y'all how to strap some lumber. And we'll try to show y'all, right, as, as best as I can. And yeah, go from there. Hey, YouTube. So, change of plans. Uh, we went to go drop off the load at Walmart in Arkansas and in Springdale and my dispatcher called me and said that um, to come back here to load another load of mulch he didn't have nothing in Russellville so right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strap this mulch load and show y'all what um, how to strap these loads and kind of explain how the strapping works and how much strap for pallet and whatnot so let me get to it let me strap yeah, come back on.
there you go the load is all strapped and right now we're in another location because the camera died so I had to drive and, and get some other batteries but yeah the load is all strapped and I just wanted to show y'all really quick that the first load the first pallet I mean there always should be two straps just that right now I did not put two straps because I'm literally going down the road to leave this load so I didn't travel very far and always the two pallets should have the first front pallets and the back pallets should have two straps and if it's a longer pallet like with two by fours it should have three straps always the remember the first pallets and the last pallets and another thing the straps should be going in through here through inside the rail like we talked in the other video but the forklift driver couldn't get these pallets in all the way because he said it, the trailer was real slick so it kept sliding on him but so that's fine like i said i'm not going very far so don't really need too much of the straps and another thing that like when they come in when they're very fragile the 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 pallet not the pallet itself but the things on the pallet you don't do it very tight like these are not very tight these straps but when it's wood like two by four lumber um they go as you know as hard as you can you can tighten them and to tighten it i have a bar there you put in here to this hole and you go down and this mechanism clicks and it keeps it strapped so that's how the way you strap with the bar and yeah guys that's pretty much it about strapping it's not really much to it and the always like the first pallet the second pallet from the first pallet they all of them can have one strap if they're small pallets and if they're longer pallets well of course you put two straps but like i said you put them between the rail and like i said the last pallet also has to have two straps but yeah and that's pretty much how you strap maybe later on when i load a, a lumber i'll show a video on how i strap that up so yes where you go